Our future is in our hands. Hi everyone, welcome back to Simple Things. The 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly convened just last week in Manhattan, New York. Now today we're going to take a brief look at some interesting and important highlights from this Pact for the Future, which was adopted at that session. And I'm going to use the Bible to point out some very important points to us. So subscribe if it's your first time here. Give a thumbs up and be prepared to share this video at the end. And leave me your interesting and valid feedback in the comment section. Just by way of information, the president of the General Assembly was Philemon Yang of the Cameroon. And we already know that the General Secretary is... Antonio Guterres of Portugal. There are 195 nations in this world and of this 193 are member states of the United Nations while the other two, the Vatican and the state of Palestine are considered observer states. We have the power to make important choices for the future. We stand at crossroads of global transformation, facing unprecedented challenges that demand urgent collective action. From conflict and climate change to the digital divide, from inequalities to threats against human rights, together we all face profound challenges. The world's most influential leaders are gathered here with one purpose to save the future. Yet shape our future together. The pact covers to 56 themes, including peace and security, sustainable development, climate change, and the transformation of global governance. Of these resolutions, let me read to you number 17. We will advance implementation of these actions through relevant mandated intergovernmental processes where they exist. We will review the overall implementation of the pact at the beginning of the 83rd session of the General Assembly through a meeting at the level of heads of states and government. We are confident that by then we will be well on course towards the better and more sustainable future we want for ourselves, our children and all the generations who will come after us. So friends, basically in four years time, they intend that such global mandates or laws, if you want to call it that, will be well in effect. Wonder which mandates they have in mind. I do believe that a careful study of Revelation 13 will point us in the correct direction. In Revelation 13, it talks about a time coming very soon, I do believe, where mankind will be forced to make its greatest decision of all, who we worship and how we worship. Basically, there will be two classes, those who have the seal of God because they keep the commandments of God and those who accept the mark of the beast. But this is a study I'd love for you to do for your own selves, my viewers and subscribers. The pact for the future How about is about turbocharging case? the sustainable development goals and the Paris Agreement, accelerating a just transition away from fossil fuels and securing a peaceful and livable future for everyone on our planet. It includes a groundbreaking commitment by governments to listen to young people and include them in decision making at the national and global levels. And it commits to stronger partnerships with civil society, the private sector, local and regional authorities and more. The Global Digital Compact is based on the principle that technology should benefit everyone it includes the first truly universal agreement on the international governance of artificial intelligence. It commits governments to establishing an independent international scientific panel on AI and initiating a global dialogue on its governance within the United Nations. The Global Digital Compact represents the first collective effort to reach agreed interoperability standards 
essential for consistent measurement. And it supports networks and partnerships to build capacity on AI in developing countries. And the Declaration on Future Generations echoes the call of the United Nations Charter to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, committing governments for the first time to taking the interest of our descendants into account in decisions we take today. Respect Listen for human rights, this. cultural diversity, and gender equality are woven into all three agreements. In the face of a surge in misogyny and the rollback of women's reproductive rights, governments have explicitly committed to removing the legal, social and economic barriers that prevent women and girls from fulfilling their potential in every sphere. Let's listen to these quotes from Ellen G. White, but first it's from Councils for the Church, page 37. We are living in the time of the end. The fast fulfilling signs of the times declare that the coming of Christ is near at hand. The days in which we live are solemn and important. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. Combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world. And the final movements will be rapid ones. Now I'd like to share with you Isaiah 8 verses 9 to 12. I so say to yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in places. And give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy. To all of them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear nor be afraid. And we already know from Manuscript Releases, Volume 7, page 417, that each of the ancient prophets spoke less for their own time than for ours, so that their prophesying is in force for us. Now remember what happened at the Tower of Babel? And you can read that in Genesis 11, verses 1 to 9. After the flood that devastated the earth, they were building a tower. They came together to build a tower that would reach up to heaven so that if by chance God would destroy the earth by a flood again, they thought they would be safe. And I want to highlight verses 4 and 6. Let me read here. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And no, nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. So these verses are suggesting one language, one people, confederacy, consolidation. It's not really what God is about. That's what man is about, but that's not what God is about. Listen to this. As individuals, we have power. And as individuals collectively, we have even more power. In Revelation 17, the Bible speaks of a time to come when a similar alliance will be formed. The alliance is referred to as the seventh king of the earth. When we apply the correct interpretation of Bible prophecy, linking this chapter with the kings in the book of Daniel, chapters 2, 3, 7, 9, etc., chapter 11 as well, we know that we are currently in the time period of the sixth king. Many believe that the seventh king to take the reins of the earth is actually the United Nations. No, I can't say it's a body that is already in existence, but we do know clearly that it will be a conglomerate of world powers, an alliance of nations, or a quote-unquote one world, or one philosophy system of governance. Verses 12 and 13 of Revelation 17 tells us, 
And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. They have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. I mean, how much clearer can the Bible get? <laughs> now, friends, this is a study that's way deeper than just this. But that's also a study which you, my viewers and subscribers, will have to prayerfully take up on your own if you haven't yet done so. Because this chapter, along with Daniel, is fulfilling before our very eyes. But we're so distracted by all that's going on. The church is being divided right now into north and south, just like back in the days with Judah and Samaria. But we're distracted with what to do with our tithes and what this preacher said and who is on this side and that side. And we're not seeing what's happening around us. I covered that in my past few videos. You can go back and watch that. So friends, I just love for you to think on these things. I'll post the link to the resolutions that were adopted in the description below this video. Just click on the title of the video and you'll see a drop down that says more and you can check on it there. So what is the UN planning to do about the global rise of AI? Artificial intelligence is actually something that makes us feel hopeful for the future because you think of all the great applications on combating climate change, better health care for development. There's all sorts of potential. But of course, there's also a bit of a darker side. So all of that is why the Secretary General is bringing not only member states together, but also tech companies around building rules for AI, sort of guardrails for this new technology that we have. I called for this summit to consider deep reforms to make global institutions more legitimate, fair and effective based on the values of the UN Charter. Because 21st century challenges require 21st century solutions and we need tough decisions to get back on track. May God bless us all on this pilgrim journey. Thanks for watching.